Well, good morning, everybody. It's a dark, sort of gloomy, rainy day here in Tipuki, which is Bay of Plenty, New Zealand. Today, I'd like to show you um, my incubation and transportation and difference of moving my eggs now to a different position. I'm just entering my office now. Just a little glance at my office and where I work when it's get some peace and quiet it's all good so what you're going to see now is the incubator itself which is here it's not very big um, but having said that it actually does hold 48 qua Japanese Quaternix quail eggs they've been in here now for 14 days exactly after 14 days what we have to do is put them into a, a system or procedure that is called lockdown. This entails, I'll take the lid off the incubator, then take the eggs out of the, uh, the red um, trays on the bottom that you can see there, which are automatic egg turners. We take them out of there then lay them flat again back in the incubator and then water is applied in uh, the maximum that can fit in there on the bottom in trays itself to bring up the humidity then they stay in this position for approximately three days and the lid cannot be removed this is why they call it lockdown so then the eggs will start to hatch in about after lockdown start maybe two or three days usually 18 to 19 days for the eggs to hatch I don't know how many will hatch but that's the way it is in breeding so you never know so the next time we see the incubator we'll be start doing the video on actually doing the eggs themselves and processing for the next stage in the meantime I'd just like to show you around the office here what I'd like to do is take you out to my garden and actually take you to my breeding cage where the Japanese Coturnix quails are I breed my own ones here so um, I know exactly where they're from and their condition and what they've been eating and things like that it's good to know that um, you've got a good stock and uh, when you're breeding your own so there there it is over there as you can see that's the breeding cage so I'll just zoom in yeah so we'll walk over there over my deck here so I've got other quails down there and other birds so I will just walk through here on my deck very damp hot and sticky here just like the tropics we've been having monsoons like the Philippines have for about three weeks now so yeah anyway here we are we've arrived at the um, the uh, the cage itself where my brooders are we I have probably got about 18 females in this cage and about six males so that's about the ratio that you use when you're breeding quails it's usually one male to either three or four females that's the the ratio you need to be breeding successfully so I'll just poke the camera in here for you and here and there they are these are my ladies and men they having a rest at the moment they've had their morning feed and probably later this afternoon, this is when they normally start to lay. I'm usually getting, at the moment, um, about 14, 12 to 14 eggs every day. So, which is not a bad ratio. Um, I found one sick one this morning because she was egg bound. So, there's different reasons why the quails don't lay consistently all the time. But this is good, 14, 14 eggs per day is, is quite good. And we sell these eggs in um, the Mount Monganui at our Asian shop, which are readily sold. And um, a lot of Asians and the, the ships, um, the big ocean liners come into Mount Monganui, especially through the summer now. It's in the height now, and there's probably, I think there's about 150 ships to come in for the rest of the summer. So it's quite good. So what I will do now is come out of here and give you a quick glimpse of my other small operation here which is my hydroponics I don't know if some of you will be familiar with hydroponics where we use a system of uh, nutrients in water 
and running through a channel here, the plastic channels like this. This is about 10 meters long, uh, it's double, so I've got room here for 120 plants like lettuce, cabbage, tomatoes, and things like that. So it's going quite well at the moment. Quite a good, easy system once you get it set up. It's basically, um, you know, maintenance free and it's not labor intensive. So there's a view of my hydroponics. Over in the corner there, I've got pumpkins and tomatoes growing. So, so what I'll do now is close down and I'll go back inside and take uh, a video of the actual eggs and removing them ready for the next process. So I'll see you soon. Thank you.